Former President Trump's Tax Cuts and Jobs Act set to expire at the end of 2025. And while Congress stalls on what comes next, if they do nothing, the law will automatically impose tax increases. Joining us right now to break this all down, National Review editor and Washington Post columnist Ramesh Panuru and uh, Natasha Sarin, Yale Law School and Yale School of Management professor, former Treasury uh, Department official. Good morning uh, to both of you. Uh, Ramesh, I want to start with you. State of play, uh, what has to happen in advance? Because I think there's partially a view that, oh, you know, we'll get to 2025 and then we'll debate it and the clock will get to midnight and uh, then we'll have a big food fight. What, what could be done in advance and, and what are you arguing for? Well, I think both parties need to really think through their priorities and what an acceptable deal would look like, um, because this is going to rush up on people pretty quickly um, after the election, because you've got, as, as you said, you've got the automatic expiration of all of these tax cuts, but you've also got the debt ceiling kicking in sometime in 2025, and you've got some health care subsidies expiring at the same time. So people need to ideally be thinking through what kinds of trade-offs that they're willing to make. What kind of trade-offs are you willing to make? Me? Personally, look, I think that we ought to have a fiscally responsible package, uh, and I think we ought to have one that uh, preserves the child tax credit in particular and helps it make up for some of the ground it's lost due to inflation over the last few years. I think one of the things that means is that we need to take some of the tax breaks that were shrunk in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act and actually and shrink them further, um, finish the job, really, of eliminating some of those tax breaks. Natasha, if I, if I made you uh, king or queen for the day, what would you do? You know, what's interesting and great is that I actually think there are a lot of areas where Ramesh and I, like, totally agree on this. If you just blanket extend the expiring provisions of the TCJA, debt-to-GDP ratios in the next decade are going to rise from 116 percent to over 130 percent, if you don't figure out a way to finance that. So my dream package would include a substantial focus on revenue raising, and much of what Ramesh said would include refundability of the child tax credit and making sure that we help those families that need it most. Okay, so how are you, how are you going to raise revenue, and how are you going to do that at the same time that you're hoping to grow the economy and, and, and not put the brakes on things? So the package that I would sort of dream design would include an increase in the corporate tax rate, as, been, as has been proposed by the Biden administration. It would include also extending many of to the business number? investment. So, I mean, the Biden administration's proposal is to go to 28. Yeah. I think it's worth noting that when TCJA was legislated, what Business Roundtable wanted, what the business community hoped for, was a tax rate of 25 percent, and TCJA came in lower than that. There is a lot of revenue to be had by a pretty small increase in the corporate rate. But and there's a the lot Biden of revenue to be had. Should be asking for 25 or should they be asking for 28? Or is this some kind of Overton window situation where if you move it one way, you hope that maybe you can get to 25? No, but I think that's kind of what Ramesh said in his column, which I thought was pretty thoughtful, which is you kind of need to start sketching out areas of compromise where you're hoping to see both revenue-raising focus and spending focus and, most importantly, fiscal responsibility in the years ahead, because we're just not in a position where we can deficit finance going forward and have debt-to-GDP ratios continuing to rise and rise. Right. That has real costs for the American people. Interest rates are going to be higher. Right. It's going to. We're going to see more inflation, and it's really fiscally dangerous. Ramesh, what, so what's going to happen to the the individual tax rates? And dare I ask, uh, since I am in one of those states, what's going to happen to the salt tax? So, if Congress doesn't act, the individual tax rates jump up, uh, and the salt deduction, the state and local tax deduction, um, the cap goes away. At the same time, just a lot of other things happen. It's a complicated situation, and it's going to be hard for people to predict exactly how their taxes change, because the child tax credit shrinks even more than it already has, but the dependent exemptions jump back up. But on the, what, third or fourth hand now, the standard deduction shrinks back again. Um, so it's going to, there's going to be pushes and pulls on people's tax bills in all different directions, but the net effect is going to be an increase for most households. Okay, and then finally, I don't know if you watch the broadcast, you know I have one tax hobby horse, which is carried interest, because 
it's one of the, the it's, it's actually one of the only things in the tax code that to me makes literally no sense. I think it's inarguable. Um, what do you think happens to that? I think that there is a huge battle and a lot of lobbying money gets spent and then nothing changes because uh, it seems to be uh, the way Congress likes it, is to keep it as a lobbying issue. Natasha? I'm more optimistic. I think you can't defend carried interest. There's just no way. It's $10 billion over the decade, so it's not the hugest money, but it really is a set of provisions that has to be addressed. It's crazy. Donald Trump even doesn't like it, or at least said he didn't like it originally. I think he was ready to go— You to, can't to, find anyone to defend it, really, well, outside uh, of the lobbying uh, community, uh, where there's a Ms. lot Cinema, of energy. Ms. Cinema can, de can defend it, but she's not in the job. She's not going to be in the job, uh, ultimately. I'm, Donald, I'm waiting Donald to see Trump when she becomes the vice chairman of a private equity firm uh, Donald Trump year. says a lot of things. <laughs> we'll see.